Here we're going to talk about the nature of data in data mining. As expected, data is the single most important part of data mining. Without data, there is no data mining. Nothing happens. Data by itself is not of much use to anyone. Only when data is combined with models, mathematical or statistical or machine learning, that leads to contextualization, summarization of data that we call information, or action over the information that we call knowledge, is when data becomes useful, actionable, an insight to base decisions upon. There exist many issues with respect to data. Finding the data is a problem. Most of the time you have the problem, but you don't have the proper data to mine to address the issue. Even if you have the data, acquiring it, transferring it, putting it into a form that can be mined might be problematic. Transforming data from one form to another might be quite cumbersome. And cleaning the data would be a time-consuming, a tedious process that one has to go through. So finding the data that can be used might be a bottleneck in many data mining applications. Data quality and quantity is perhaps the single most important ingredient in quality outcomes that you can generate out of data mining. Data has to be valid, accurate, and properly represented. The saying of garbage in, garbage out goes beautifully, if you will, with data mining because it takes the data and the quality of data determines the outcome, the information and knowledge that it actually generates. Data basically is a collection of facts about a phenomena. It could be an event, it could be customers, it could be any type of objects. It's often viewed as the lowest level of abstraction in the continuum of data to information, information to knowledge, knowledge to wisdom. Without data, no information. Without data and information, you don't have knowledge. So data is the lowest and the foundational extent of this continuum. Data can be composed of any combination of numbers, numeric representations of variables. It could be letters, it could be words, it could be images, it could be video, or it could even be voice recordings, symbols, all of which are different dimensions of data collectively can potentially be used for data mining projects. Data is naturally dirty in real world, and it is incomplete. Most of the data that you find in, say, demonstrations in websites are already cleaned, properly organized for you. The real data that you generate from your own organization, from a real world phenomena, will have a lot of dirty and missing values that you're going to spend a lot of time to identify and to fix. Because of that, any and every data mining project requires an extensive data pre-processing step to be executed. Data processing or pre-processing is perhaps the most important and time-consuming task in data mining as we talked about it in the, the data mining process. It might consume up to 80, 85 to 90 percent of the total project time, depending upon how dirty the data is and how unfamiliar you might be with the data and the source of the data. So let's look at data from a taxonomical perspective. What do we mean data? So data in data mining can be of two different types. It could be structured data or it could be unstructured data. A lot of people might also consider semi-structured in between the two. Just for the sake of simplicity, let's talk about structured versus unstructured. Structured data is the data that can be put into rows and columns. Data that you would see in relational databases. Data that you would see in well-normalized relational tables. So structured data can be of categorical or it could be numerical. Categorical means it could be letters, it could be symbols, it could even be numbers, but not numerically representing the phenomena, but only representing the distinction using numbers as labels. 
or it could be numerical where the numbers are there for magnitudinal perspective. It could be interval type of numbers, it could be ratio type of numbers, but larger the number, larger the value that the number is representing in a data mining context. Categorical data could be nominal or it could be ordinal. For instance, if we're talking about marital status, right, it could be single, married, divorced, maybe several others, all of which are distinctly unique from each other. There is no any ordinal or one is more important than the other type of relationship amongst them. So we call those kind of data as nominal, equally distant from each other. Ordinal means low, medium, high, right? If you're gonna represent with labels, not numbers, then you're talking about an ordinal data. And that's how it should be defined in data mining for proper processing. On the right-hand side of the taxonomy, the unstructured data plays into text mining and multimedia mining. The data in unstructured form could be textual, where text analytics and text mining can be used, and we are going to look at it in one of our future lessons. It could be multimedia in the context of images, audio, and video, which can be mined using pattern recognition. So there is a pre-processing step, even in multimedia, where the images, audio, and video can be converted into some form of structured representation, and then the pattern recognition and data mining algorithms can be applied to it. And data could be in XML, HTML format, which is somewhat unstructured, but most call it semi-structured data because there's some kind of structure imposed upon it that could be leveraged in data mining context, not treating them completely unstructured, but using some structured features of the data to better pre-process the data for data mining algorithms. So this is a simple taxonomy for data as it relates to data mining. Now let's look at the pre-processing of data. How do we convert the raw data into data that can be mined? Data can be originating from internal or external sources. It could be online transaction processing, basically transactional data in any business setting. It could be data coming from web pages. It could be legacy database data in relational or non-relational form. Or it could also be coming from social media, social data. The raw data, any combination of that that pertains to the problem that you want to analyze, goes through a data consolidation process where you identify, collect, select, and integrate the data into a single repository. Then you apply data cleaning on it. Cleaning means you find the missing values, find a way to handle them. Are you gonna take those records out? Are you gonna input or replace the most representative values in those missing value places? You're gonna reduce the noise. You're gonna to look to see the distribution of each of the variables. You're gonna find the outliers and then decide what to do with those outliers. Sometimes outliers are the target that you're actually looking for. They are the pattern that you're shooting for. Removing them means there is nothing valuable left in the data. In most cases, if that's not the goal of the data mining study, removing outliers will smooth the data and make it more amenable to data mining algorithms. Data cleaning is followed by the data transformation. Now clean data can be normalized, discretized, and then additional attributes can be derived from the existing variables depending upon what you're analyzing, what models you're building, oftentimes combining different variables into new variables makes it more predictive, more informative in the eye of data mining algorithms. Once data is properly transformed, then you may or may not choose to reduce the data depending upon how big and how messy and how large the data and the, the limitation of the capabilities that you have in your analytic system. So reduction means you can reduce the dimensionality, meaning you have large number of variables and then you don't wanna use all of them, you wanna use only the ones that are most relevant to the, say, prediction problem that you're analyzing in a data mining project. 
Okay, there are ways in which you can find those most representative subset of variables to include in a data mining study. As the dimensions increase, so does the time it takes to build the models. Actually, it does in an exponential manner. Data dimensionality reduction is a critical process, especially for data sets with very large number of variables, such as uh, genomic data, for instance. Tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of variables needs to be condensed into a manageable size so that the predictive models can be applied to it. Volume, if the data is too large to handle with the resource available to you, you can always sample the data, hoping that your sample is a good representation of the population. And then you can also balance the data. Data balancing means if you're predicting whether or not um, a, a group of patients has or ha, uh, has not been diagnosed with, uh, with diabetes, for instance, um, depending upon the representation of the two classes, one class might dominate the representation of the other. This phenomenon also apparent in fraud detection because out of, say, 1,000 transactions, one is fraud. So in your training data set, you have 1,000 no fraud, one fraud, 1,000 no fraud, one fraud, randomly collected, organized, pulled together. So if you use that data, the model is going to be favoring the not fraud side and be 99.9% .9 accurate, which means not predicting anything at all, and will not actually accurately predict any of the frauds, which is not a good thing, right? For those kind of situations where the class label has a significant imbalance, it is advisable, actually required, to balance the data somehow, either doing oversampling, undersampling, or some kind of mechanism in between to balance the two class labels as closely to one another as possible in a 50-50 range in a two-class classification problem for better results for both of the class labels. So that's the pre-processing steps that you go through in a data mining project.